Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. It's good to see everyone. Um, our service is going to be a little bit uh, different format this morning, but uh, to start, I just have a few announcements, and uh, then we'll be turning it over to Pearson Word. Um, just a reminder for next Sunday that our Easter breakfast will be served at 8 a.m. Uh, there will not be any Sunday school class, and the regular morning service will be at 9.30, and Daryl will be sharing the message. Um, next one is a thank you and a request, just a thank you to you as a church body um, for your willingness to help each other in times of need. I know it's been a blessing to Tina and I for many years uh, being a part of this, and yeah, it's great to be part of a, a body that helps each other out. Um, some upcoming needs uh, that would be great if we continue. It'd be great if we could continue that help is with um, transportation for Lil Unruh to various appointments. Uh, Cindy Pocrop has agreed to help coordinate that, but she isn't able to to do it all herself, obviously. So, if you have any availability uh, in that area. Uh, Cindy will be the one coordinating it, and we'll try and, and get the need communicated. Um, another update, as many of you know, our Bible quizzers are out in Ohio this weekend, and uh, Wes updated me this morning that they did great. They uh, placed in the top 24 out of 67 teams. So that's impressive. Um, the next one... Uh, my wife is going to come up and give an update so I don't uh, miscommunicate anything. <laughs> so, um, like last year, we are going to try to work, um, I call it springtime blessings, blessing some of our missionaries, just with words of encouragement. I don't know about you, but I think of our missionaries, but sometimes I forget to, and I just I run out of time to write them a note, or you know, say hi, or thinking of you, or send them an email. Um, so. Since I'm forgetful with that kind of stuff, I'm trying to help all of us do that. But anyway, I just wanted to say last year when we did the little notes of encouragement to each of our missionaries, um, there was one that actually said, I sat there and I cried as I read each and every note. It just meant so much to me. Um, so again, thank you because it really is impactful um, when we do that. So what I'm doing this year is... <laughs> is I have a table out there with basket of um, note cards. So kind of like last year, but a little bit different. We're going to use these cards, and you can decorate on each side or just one side. I tried to make it really easy. There's um, laminated cards out there with some meaningful verses, because sometimes I sit there and I think, what verse could I use to encourage them? And I forget, and I can't think of one. So I'm just trying to make it really easy. You could pick up one of these, you could write it out. Even I told the kids, even if you just say, I'm thinking of you, and I appreciate what you're doing. You know, just one sentence. And then I have a whole bunch of stickers, um, some of them are fun stickers, some of them are verse stickers, just to decorate and put on them. Um, there's also, I said, even if you, and this, it can't get any easier than this, there's these really nice Verse cards, you can just tape one on and write to Marlon and Sambot from, you know, Elsie, you know, just to make it very easy. Then what we're going to do is, because we're doing these note cards, is I'll, I'll have all these cards and I'm going to put them in a ring so that they can actually put them in a pocket or in a purse and just flip through them and read them when they need some encouragement. So if you could, over the next couple weeks, take just a few minutes, stop by the table, do it for our four missionaries, Marlon Sambat, um, Mircha and Elena, and um, Florian and Tina, um, Carl and Cindy, and the Ericsons. Or, I'm sorry, the Carlsons. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, as you probably have caught on, Piercing Word is here uh, to share with us this morning. So thank you for that. Uh, I will mention uh, they have, if you haven't seen it, there's a table out in the hub with lots of information. There's also a donation basket, so if you feel led after the service, uh, please uh, remember to, to leave a donation. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi, I'm Joy Schaefer. 
My name is Aaron House, and we are Piercing Word team members, and we're so excited to be with you guys this morning. Uh, for those of you that may not know, the mission of Piercing Word is to ignite passion for the Word of God in the heart of the church. And we do that by performing scripture. In dramatic and musical presentations, they're all taken word for word from the ESV Bible. In other words, the scripture is our script. And today, you're going to be experiencing Passion the Musical, which is a contemporary journey through the Last Supper, Trial, Crucifixion, and Resurrection of Jesus. But we don't just perform scripture. We challenge everyone, everywhere we go, to memorize God's word for themselves. And that includes you. Uh, we invite you today to join and begin our Passion the Musical Memorization Challenge, which can be found by uh, getting your program and scanning the QR code with your smartphone. It'll take you to an app called the First Locker, and this is just full of fun and effective tools that can help you begin to hide God's Word in your heart today. Uh, we also have a Connect card that you can find in that program, and if you will fill it out and bring it to our table and after, the, after the service, um, we can exchange that for a free gift, which is one of our Piercing Word Scripture Music CDs, also to help you on your uh, memorization journey, we have a book called Warriors of the Word. Now, this book is full of just practical and inspirational <coughs> insights to help you memorize the Bible. And um, so if memorizing scripture makes you feel kind of intimidated, or if you're looking for ways to just learn how to memorize more effectively, we, uh, we just encourage you to come and pick up one at our, our table after the uh, performance. Also, Piercing Word is a full-time nonprofit ministry based right here in, uh, right, well, well, nearby in Lancaster, <laughs> Pennsylvania, and we're supported solely by the generosity of individuals, churches, businesses, and organizations that believe in the ministry of Piercing Word. So, if you're blessed by today's scripture performance, uh, as he said, you can give a donation at our ba basket at our table in the lobby. You can also uh, give digitally at our table. Um, credit card, Google Pay, Apple Pay, all those things. You can also give digitally on our website by going to piercingword.org slash donate. And we're actually asking the Lord right now for 100 new uh, monthly uh, supporters to join the Piercing Word family of supporters. Uh, so whether you make your gift recurring or, or one time, it's totally fine. Uh, but uh, we're, if, if the Lord's calling you to, to be one of our regular supporters in both prayer and finances, that would be a huge blessing, and we thank you in advance for your partnership and ministry with us. It's because of your partnership that we can continue to engage people with the Word of God in these creative and powerful ways. At the end of the service, we will have a couple of team members at the front who would love to pray with you for anything that's on your heart. Today, we'll also have team members in the lobby who would love uh, to answer any questions you have about the ministry and, uh, and talk with you and get to know you as well. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Passion the Musical which portrays the Last Supper, the, tri the trial, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a modern urban setting. Now, our script is compiled from passages from all four Gospels, as well as Psalm 23 and Isaiah 53. Um, in this performance, you will see how the prophecies that are found in the Psalms, the Prophets, and the Law are all fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Really beautiful. Uh, and so now we ask that you would please um, open your hearts to the Holy Spirit as we share with you Passion, the musical. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where would you have us go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. The Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of 
Likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine till that day. When I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom.
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going back to God, rose from supper, laying aside his outer garments, he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. You shall never wash my feet. If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Well, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. No, the one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet. But it's completely clean. And you are clean. But not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? <laughs> you call me teacher and Lord. You are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also ought to do just as I have done to you. In a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also ought to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Let's not do your heart. Believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Lord, we do not know where to are going. How can we know the way? I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. You would have known me. You would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all fall away because of me this night. For as it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But 
After I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. But if they all fall away because of you, I will never, I will never fall away. Truly, I say to you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here, while I go over there and pray. Then taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled, and he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Going on a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. <coughs> The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But again, he went away and prayed for the second time, saying, My father, if this cup cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came to the disciples, found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. And he came to the disciples and said, See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Judas, having procured a band of soldiers, and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under God. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said, Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you have given me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it it struck the high ah! servant and cut off his right ear. Ah! The servant's name was... Thou can ah! put your sword back into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Do you not think that I can appeal to my Father and he would at once send more than twelve legions of angels? What? <laughs> How then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? And he touched his ear and he healed him. <laughs> against me as a robber with swords and gloves to capture me day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me but how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so then all, all the disciples, disciples left him and fled so the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and they led him to their high priest. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together. Peter sat down among them. And a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light, and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, Ah, oh, you also are one of them. Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, 
certainly this man also was with him for me. He, he too is a Galilean. Man, I do not know what you are talking about! And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. How he said to him, This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard this man say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. <laughs> In three days I will rebuild another, not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in their midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? I am. And you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the power of God, and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And they began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, uh, saying to him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? <laughs> and they said many other things against him, blasphemy him. And the guards received him with blows. <laughs> When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led Jesus to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Are, are you the Son of God, God then? then? You say that I am. Well, what further testimony do we need? We've heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but keep the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then take him yourself and judge him by your own law. It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. So, you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Anyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, even to this place. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. Besides, 
While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. So the chief priest stirred up the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to destroy Jesus. The governor again said to him, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas! Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. He went out again to him and said, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know I find no guilt in him. Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer, so Pilate said, You would not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when the Jews saw that they were that the riot, when he saw that the riot was beginning and that that nothing was going to happen, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people all answered, His, his blood, blood be on us and on our children. children. So he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him, and they put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head. And they put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! <laughs> and they spit on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews therefore read the inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said I am the king of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to uh, see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, And divided my garments among them, <laughs> and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. And those who passed by derided him, <laughs> wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple, and in three days rebuild it, will save yourself. And if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, 
He saved others. He cannot save himself. <laughs> he is the king of Israel. Let him come down now oh. from the cross and we will believe in him. Oh, oh, oh he trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. <laughs> now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God. My God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling for Elijah. <laughs> After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, so he opened not his mouth. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, as one from whom men hide their faces, but we esteemed him not. Smitten by God, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Truly, this man was the Son of Truly this man was the son of 
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Since it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of them, a soldier, pierced his side with a spear, and there at once came blood and water. He who saw has borne witness, and his testimony is true, and he knows he is telling the truth, that you may also believe. For these things took place, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. So, Pilate gave him permission, so they came and took his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds on weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now... In the place where they were crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden, a new tomb where no one had yet been laid. So, because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, there was Jesus there. There were also many women looking on from a distance, and when we came, and saw the tomb and how his body was laid, and then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested, according to the commandment. The next day, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore ordered the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and say, He has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene <coughs> came to the tomb early while it was still dark. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. But for fear, the guards trembled and became like dead men. The angel said, Why you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen as he said. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day
and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, then tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Mary. Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord! And that he had said these things to her. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! <coughs> and they came up, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said to them, do not be afraid, but go into Galilee, tell my brothers, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the soldiers went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had gathered with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said to them, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole them away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears... We will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were directed. And this story <coughs> has been passed on the Jews to this day. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Again he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. But when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. But if you withhold forgiveness from any, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came, so the disciples told him, we, we have seen, seen the Lord, Lord. thus I see in his hands, place my hand to my side, to place my finger to the mark of the nails, I will never believe. Unless I see in his hands, he place my hand to his side, place my finger. Yeah. 
these are my words that I spoke while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the Psalms and the prophets might be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer these things, <coughs> and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Go therefore into Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Spirit. Behold, I am with you. To the end of the earth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, and whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, for the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Therefore, 
If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ. Be, be reconciled, reconciled to God. God. For our sake, he made him to be sin. Remove no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. For all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. But God shows his love in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of Christ is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Because if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. you to continue in an attitude of prayer and just talk with the Lord about whatever he's bringing to your heart and mind right now by his Holy Spirit. I believe that God was speaking in different ways to different people during this time. Maybe you're here, maybe you've been going through a time of grief, like and you saw Jesus was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He can give you comfort. Maybe you even saw him comforting his mom, grieving beside the cross. The woman to hold your son, giving him, giving her John as as an open, or, or, as a as a caretaker, as as, as as an auxiliary family member. Maybe the Lord is comforting you right now, giving you someone that can walk with you. Maybe you're here. And Jesus' words from the cross hit you hard when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You're like, how could he forgive them for that? I can't even forgive this person who did this to me. And God's calling you to forgive. He says, if you, if you forgive, whatever you stand praying forgives, so that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive others, as Christ has forgiven us, you won't be forgiven. So I, mean, I, I would challenge you to take a moment and forgive that person if that's you right now. <clears throat> Maybe you're here this morning and you've never actually begun a relationship with Jesus. You're realizing that you don't have that conversation with God on a regular basis, you, you can't. 
because you haven't begun it. And you realize that today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. You, you give him the driver's wheel of your life and you sit in the passenger seat. You say, you're in charge now. And you're ready to do that. So that you can experience his forgiveness, his grace, his peace, his eternal life that starts now, not just when you die. If you're ready to begin that relationship with Jesus and call him the Lord of your life, I want to give you the opportunity to do that this morning and, and specifically acknowledge that before God. So everyone's continuing to pray. If this is an acknowledgement between you and God, if that's you this morning, I need to begin that relationship with Jesus. I just want you to raise your hand where I can see it. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. That's you. Just raise your hand where I can see it. It's my acknowledgement between you and God. That's me. I need to begin that relationship with Jesus for the first time today. Okay. All right, hands down. All right, in a second, we're going to pray. And if you pray, if you raise your hand, I want you to pray this prayer with me. But if you, if you have been following Jesus for a long time, I also want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Because how many of you know we need the gospel every day, right? Okay? So, as a, you can pray it as a simple affirmation of your continued faith walk with, with Jesus, okay? There's nothing magical about these words, but it's this conversation with God, with Jesus. So, I want you to pray this prayer uh, out loud with me. I want you to, so, whether, whether you just raised your hand and you're beginning that relationship for the first time or you've been walking with Jesus for a number of years, I want you to repeat after me and pray this prayer out loud. Are you ready? Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Thank you for raising him on the third day and for the promise of the resurrection for me. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit. I want to know you more. I want to abide in you. And to know your word. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for being here this morning. Praise God. today. It's exciting. So, I want to encourage you, if you if you were one of those that raised your hand, and you said, I need to be in that relationship with Jesus for the first time, don't leave here without telling someone what you've done, because we're ready to celebrate with you. Did you know that all heaven celebrates when one comes to faith in Jesus, and understands that, and begins that relationship with God. So we're going to celebrate with you, and then we actually also have uh, a gift for you uh, at the table. We have a little gift bag with the Bible in it we would love to give you uh, as our gift to you at the table so be sure and come get that if you raised your hand um, so you can uh, you can uh, we would also love to just uh, affirm what God's doing in your heart and life uh, so we, you know we can, we can pray with you uh, but be sure be sure whether you, whether you tell us or whether you tell someone else be sure and talk to someone about that if you began that relationship uh, this morning with Jesus also, uh, we, we, I believe God's going to continue to work during this time. So God's been working. He, you know, we're gonna, he's going to continue to work. So, so uh, me and one of the other team members, uh, Joy, is going to be up here with me. And we're going to be praying for you for anything that's on your heart. So uh, whether you want to pray and just affirm the work that God's doing, whether you just began a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you're like, hey, I need healing for this, or my family member this, or whatever it is, or I need deliverance from the enemy's attacks in this, whatever it is, we'd love to stand with you in prayer. Uh, whatever that is. So please don't hesitate to come up and pray. Uh, we would love to stand with you in that. And uh, yeah, uh, we look forward to, to meeting you, talking with you, and there will be other team members in the lobby as well. Thanks so much for having us this morning. I think God richly bless each and every one of you. Go in peace. Thank you.